All right, how's it going, everybody? Uh, today, I'm going to show you how to use your command line to navigate so we can build a directory and then we can start building an Angular project. And then I'm going to go over with you um, how the Angular project is set up and how the file structure works um, so that way you understand um, how this is all going to work together. So essentially, um, go ahead and uh, if you haven't already, go install GitHub Tools. Um, you can do that at um, githubdesktop.com which I believe I have up here somewhere here we go um, go ahead and download it for Windows, Mac, whatever version and go ahead and pause the video here and I'll wait till you get done alright great now you should have it installed and you should have noticed that uh, a couple things went to your desktop and those are git command tools now these are bash command tools which give us some um, protocols and some uh, and some libraries to grab things from the git repositories and to extend grabbing things from the internet gives a lot more power than a regular command line uh, that comes with windows or the terminal that comes with mac so um, now that you got that on there um, we're going to use the git command tool and you don't have to use it you can use a regular command line or terminal if you wish um, but if you are going to use it remember to right click on it and use it and run it as administrator um, if not just go ahead and open up a command line and let's start building our project so what we're going to do is we need to create the directory that we are going to be in uh, we need a folder to hold all of our projects now if you know how the CD works and how you're going to navigate into your documents if that's where you store your projects or wherever else it is then go ahead and set up this new folder there um, if not I'm just gonna put it right on my desktop so let's go ahead and navigate over to the desktop in order to do that you're gonna put in CD space and then capital D uh, don't forget the capital D uh, and then type in desktop and then press enter now you see that uh, the, the file path has changed to desktop. Now we're on our desktop. So now let's make a directory. So I'm going to go ahead and MK DIR. And then I'm going to go ahead and put um, my Angular um, underscore, or I'll put dash app um, 2018. Why not? So let's just go ahead and do that and press enter. Now, if you put spaces in between there, um, you're going to get multiple folders. You have to use dash and underscore to divide these out. Because uh, if I put my space, angular space, app space 2008, I'll get four folders. Each of them will be titled. Um, the space breaks it up and builds you a new component so or a new folder directory. So now that folder is built. So now it's built. Let me show it to you on the desktop. Um, let's go ahead and shrink that real quick. Um, you will see it uh, do, do. I built it right here so boom there it is so there's the file um, directory that we just built it you should see it on your desktop now now we want to go ahead and uh, open up another command line um, because we're gonna want to uh, install uh, Angular CLI on your system and this is the only time you're going to install Angular on your desktop and I'm going to include a cheat sheet for you so you can use it as a reference to build things with because you're going to want to build components and classes and modules and all kinds of really cool stuff that we're going to be building and um, you're going to want to know the command line uh, queries to do this um, so go ahead and open up another command line so if you're using git command don't forget to right click and run as administrator and then Go ahead and open that. Now, let's just go ahead and click on the initial one first. Let's go ahead and go into that directory we just made. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can just type in CD, and since we're already on the desktop, just type in the name of this folder, or you can simply highlight it, press Control or Command C, depending on if you're Mac or Windows, copy it. Even though it looked like it just blinked and didn't get nothing, you actually did, and I can copy it right here, and then you can press Enter, or you can actually go to the folder, double click on it and once that opens go up here to, the, to where the, the file path is in the file path bar right click on it copy the address now I'll go ahead and just delete that and put that in there so you can see that it shows you the exact full file path of the entire um, 
file path unlike just typing in the folder name now if you're just typing in the folder name sometimes if you are like in your users directory or just your or just any directory that's not on the desktop um, if you're not one step away from it or the folder then you have to use the full file path and that's why I showed you that because in some instances you're just gonna want to go right click on the folder or whatever directory like if it was the pictures directory I couldn't just type in pictures and go there I'd have to be in my users um, section my users folder directory uh, to do that so it's beneficial to know that you can click on the file right click on the file path to put it in there either way let's go ahead and press enter now we're inside the file that we just created alright so um, I've created a couple of them so I know this one says my angular apps as opposed to my angular app 2018 and uh, it's because I've created four of them already um, but either way that's a file directory that I want it to be in now what we're gonna do before we start setting up a project is we're gonna set up um, angular CLI CLI stands for command line interface working with these angular frameworks they come built with um, they're able to connect with node like I told you before node is the machine that runs the, the angular and these frameworks like Vue and react and uh, they all come with call these command line interfaces now the reason they come with these is it's a it's an extra program feature uh, so we can generate and build things using the command line much like Ruby on Rails uh, but a lot more powerful a lot more robust so uh, we're gonna need to install angular CLI so we can actually get the angular core into our actual operating system so we can utilize it while building a new angular project so what we're gonna do is type in npm um, install and then I believe it's at angular core um, let me double check this real quick Let me go ahead. Yeah, hold on a second. You could type this long. Um, if you ever need the instructions for this, you can go to angular.io and go just click on getting started, and it will show you. Uh, you can copy this exact command like I just did and paste it in there. But you want to type in npm, which is node package manager. We're calling the node package manager since we installed node on your system. Install um, dash g, then at angular dash cli forward slash cli now before doing this you should have node installed on your system so if you don't have node installed go to node.com or uh, .org I forget what it is but go to node and you should be able to download it to your system and there's a versions available for Windows Mac and Linux so go ahead if you haven't done that yet pause the video here and go download node onto your system um, by I'll wait here for a minute all right great you should have it downloaded onto your system so you have node you got github installed now let's go ahead and, and install angular CLI so go ahead and press enter and this is gonna run and um, mine has already ran and installed so um, what we're gonna do next is if you want to go ahead and just pause the video for a minute and and let this install because it's going to take a little bit go ahead and pause it right here let it install and then uh, when you're ready uh, come back and we'll go through the rest of the instructions to actually set up an angular project alright great you should already have um, angular set up on your system node set up on your system and we should have github set up all on our system now you should never have to install these again unless you're trying to update them um, as you can see here I need an update for node so what we're gonna want to do now is build an angular project now you can build as many angular projects as you want as frequently as you want um, and if you want to build uh, React or Vue, uh, go to their websites and you're going to have to install their CLI um, as well. And then you can build all the Vue and React projects you want as well. And remember, React is a Reactful code and it was prominently built by Facebook. So uh, everything Facebook does is in React plus some more. But we got Reactful. Um, technology and dependencies within Angular as well um, and that's why I love Angular but let's go ahead and type in the commands to get going so uh, you should still have your command line window open and you should be in your apps folder so if not remember you CD get the file path name or type in the name of the, the directory you created myangular-apps2018 
I'm just gonna copy that so I can get it in the right directory. So let me CD desktop CD. All right, hold on a second. Now I see how I've gotten too far ahead. Now I've got to copy that file path. So let me get in the right file path. All right. So let me open it up. Let me copy it. Sorry, my computer is running so slow. I got a lot of things going on. All right. Well, either way, um, you should already be there. If not, make sure you CD into the file that you want. I'm going to go ahead and use this file, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete the other one since I built four of them before. Um, but let's go ahead and since you're in that app, what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and type in ng because ng uh, is Angular's um, prime directive basically uh, to initiating any other technology. And you're going to type in new. And by pressing ng and new, it's telling uh, the Angular CLI, hey, let's go talk to Node and let's set up a brand new Angular project. So now all you got to do is name your project. Let's name it to do dash app all right then after you're done doing that go ahead and press enter and you're gonna see that it's gonna start generating all types of cool files and when that is done go ahead and pause the video and by the time um, you're done with that um, we should be uh, able to go so go ahead and pause it right now until this is finished and then we'll go ahead and resume all right great now you should have an angular project set up in your file directory that we just created so now not only do you have the awesome technology of node and using different javascript frameworks on your computer plus you have github now you should have a brand new angular project set up in that folder that you created and you should know how to use command line to direct yourself into those folders and you should know how to create a new directory folder uh, to store new projects in now you see here this generates everything it creates all the files we need so and I'm gonna go over in this next section with you I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about what was just created and show you where you need to go from there so let's go ahead and shrink all this down and get into learning about angular now one more thing I forgot to tell you is um, your IDE I don't know which IDE you are using and um, if you're using visual code that would be preferable um, you can use brackets if it's got the terminal output on it um, if it doesn't then you can use um, WebStorm which if you're a student uh, you should be able to get WebStorm for free uh, just send them just let them have your college email and they verify it real quick and you should be able to download it and that is the best bet and I love WebStorm so all students are able to download it for free uh, as long as well as with uh, Visual Studios but we're gonna go ahead and use Visual Studios code if you don't have that go ahead and download it because we're gonna be using it uh, with this project it's very fast and effective and I'll, I'll leave a cheat sheet for that as well uh, because it's got a lot of cool plugins and it comes pre-installed with github so um, we don't need to download anything extra for it so go ahead if you don't have it go ahead and pause the video here and go ahead and install it and I'll wait just a second if not we'll go ahead and move on alright great you should have visual studio code uh, ready to go on your system uh, if you're not going to use it and you're going to use your other ID that's great too but let's go ahead and let's start working on the project so if you want to get into code simply all you type in is the word code and um, since you're already in that folder all you gotta do is press enter and that folder uh, will load as long as you type the folder name after code um, then you'll be able to load that folder into visual code and you're ready to go um, if you want to just type code it's gonna just open uh, Visual Studio Code so let's go ahead and do that we'll open it up so there we go. Now we have the project loaded into code and we're ready to go. If you just put in code and your project's not in here, go to file. Um, go ahead and go to open file, not new file. 
and open your folder here um, not file sorry I meant to say file don't open a file don't make a new file open a folder or open a workspace you don't have a workspace yet because you haven't built one so open your folder go to the folder directory and you should see your folder have um, the directory that you built um, you're gonna want to go inside the directory that you built and this is where our app was actually created this folder contains all the guts and all the packages and, and dependencies that node created to build an angular project this is the angular project okay so we're wanting to get to this folder right here the to do app and open that from visual studio code or your other ID of choice so let's go ahead and do that real quick and you should see these files right here I'm gonna go ahead and close these files out because we'll go over them here in just a minute so alright you should already have uh, your file your folder open and you should have a blank IDE just like this and you should see all these different files now if you're looking at it going wow this looks pretty intimidating let me show you it's really not as bad as you think so let's go ahead and take a look here at what we got this E2E file these are TypeScript files now I touched on TypeScript files what TypeScript is is it's strong coded because as you know JavaScript isn't isn't very strongly coded um, you can use global variables as um, class variables and you know I, I can use a global variable and still use it within a function so it's not really strongly typed it's not really object oriented so what they did is they developed TypeScript um, as an intermediary which actually does all the work in the back end we're still going to use JavaScript you don't need to learn a new language and it converts everything into TypeScript for you so it's a strongly language there's a couple things that I'll need to tell you about that will make perfect sense and this is how TypeScript, TypeScript will work but um, other than that um, you don't need to worry about learning how to code TypeScript you just need to know a little bit of format and how the dependencies work so let's go over these file structures really quick and uh, that way you understand but basically this E2E file we're never going to touch it um, this has everything to do with TypeScript and the backend logic of Node and Angular working together so we're never going to mess with that this Node modules file contains all the modules um, basically every library that we can use with Angular and with JavaScript and, and has you got literally hundreds of files in here and these are all custom JavaScript libraries um, specifically for Angular and for building these web page applications so let's take a look inside this real quick alright now we have this tslint.json file this is the file that talks to your actual linter um, in your IDE so we never want to mess with this file all right, these are things um, that only your IDE needs to talk to so we can code correctly. Um, you're never going to mess with that. Your tsconfig JSON file, same thing, but it's for all your JSON objects. Um, it actually points out the library type and the ES2017, so this is the JavaScript library that we're going to be using, um, and just basically shows the dependencies for that. So we're never going to mess with this file. The readme file, it's just a readme.md file. We're never going to use it. It's got some links. Um, it tells you that this is basically projected by Angular and the Angular CLI and goes over the school, the scaffolding, and a bunch of stuff we're never going to worry about or ever use. Um, and we're never going to need it. When you um, export this project to GitHub, um, we're going to have a totally different readme file. But this readme file will be in here as well. Um, so. I mean, it's it's nothing we gotta worry about. Just leave it alone. Protractor config.js file. Um, this is just some more configuration of your JavaScript files and, and for the libraries. And this is what works with the servers and the testing um, utilities that are involved in there because we do have testing utilities uh, and we do have a server in here which we're gonna fire off here in a minute so we can see our project. Um, AngularJS comes fully loaded with the server instead of working with just web pages or if you're used to like WordPress or something um, having to have the PHP files in the back end this is pure JavaScript and it's it, it's based off of uh, using the node package manager which gives us everything from an inbuilt server to testing tools and all kinds of cool tools we get to use to actually serve up a live project from our desktop as if we were in a server so um, it's really cool but these are all configuration files for that we're not going to mess with 
Same thing with the package JSON file. We're never going to mess with it. Or the package lock JSON file. The Karma configuration file. This is that testing tool I was telling you about. Karma is a testing tool. Uh, these are all your testing configurations uh, for testing parts of your applications, your classes, different services you build, APIs you build, all these different things. Then uh, we got the GitHub file that stores the commands for GitHub so we can uh, you know, fetch and get different branches um, and send different information to our GitHub accounts. Um, the editor config file, you're never going to want to mess with this file. Um, this is just basically telling it's UTF-8, um, your indent styles. Uh, I mean, if you want to mess with this, you want to indent style true. This is all stuff for, you, for your linter. This tells the IDE what to do um, and how to construct it. So these are just basic constructions. Uh, you don't really want to mess with this. So basically, everything under this source folder, leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Never going to mess with it. Okay. Um, now, I haven't talked about this source file. The source file is where we're going to do our work in. All of these other files, as elaborate as they might seem, don't even worry about them. We're never going to mess with them. All right. And every time we need a new module, like if we're going to bring in Bootstrap um, to style our app, um, well, we're going to use the command line down here. And as you'll notice, this is Visual Studio Code. Um, if you're not seeing this, go up to View, go to Output, click Output, and this whole entire bar will show up down here where it will show you code output for when it compiles a debug console, plus we get a terminal. So now we don't have to open a command line. We can use the command line right from here. And it's also got a little plus over here to where we can press it and we can have as many different terminals uh, as we want and so I can have a fresh terminal every time I want to change something up and it comes in handy being able to do that for certain reasons when you get really in-depth coding these applications but I'm digressing here so let's move on so the source file this is where we're gonna do the majority of our work alright now inside that source file you're gonna see is called an app file an assets file an environments file and then you're gonna have all this stuff now all of these other loose files down here we're not gonna mess with um, we got the direct files here and let me show you this just to make it easier on you um, real quick this will load up so this is what we got going on here okay this project right here this project folder the, the source that app folder that's our main root component instead of web pages which consider the are made up of an HTML page and then you've got to build a style sheet which is a CSS page and then you usually have a JavaScript page separately that has all your logic on it and then you got to link them up in the header uh, with actual links and URIs um, instead of doing that they put them in separate folders um, and call them components. That's essentially what we're doing. And then you can use these components on one page instead of having multiple pages trying to go to one source. You see what I'm saying? They've kind of reversed the way web technology actually works and just put everything in their own directories and gave them each their own files. So instead of having one big CSS file that covers all the CSS for an entire project and one JavaScript file that has all kinds of different functions and classes on it for the entire project and it gets broken down in different places, each different HTML file gets essentially its own logic file and its own style file and um, the entry point of the application is the index HTML just like any other uh, website you always got an index.html page that's the main file that's the home page anything you put on the index HTML file is permanently going to be there so if I put um, you know the all rights reserved plus the uh, little sign and you know the website name and all that stuff and I put that in the index.html file that's going to be on every single it, it's never going to go away it's always going to be there all right and since it's only a single page application it's always going to be there um, the components we we rotate through those and I'll show you how that works here in a minute um, to build you different views from all these components um, but they always every every one of these components shows up on the index HTML file and then you got a main style folder and a main TypeScript file folder which is your logic and like I said we're taking with these TypeScript files and we're converting uh, the JavaScript into um, TypeScript so that's why it's a .ts and not a .js file 
essentially. And then uh, we have our assets file, um, which you'll see back here in a minute. That holds everything from extra style sheets, JavaScript libraries, uh, anything you want to custom build. Uh, if you're going to put all your images in there, uh, that's where your images will go. If you're going to load um, external images, uh, you put them in there. And then you get a link to them, to your server, and everything like that. And then you got all your configuration files, which what we just went over. You're never going to mess with your configuration files. Just leave them alone. Don't ever worry about them unless you know what you're doing with them and you have some purpose because you're connecting other technologies to it or something then you're never going to need to mess with them so just leave them alone what we're going to work in is the source file and we're going to build components um, and even though this app component this is called your root component all right now we're going to manipulate the html and the ts file in the root component but um, we're also going to build other components and i'm going to show you how to do that here in just a minute and like I said, each one of these components is, think of it as a, as a web page. But instead of having to click a link and go to that whole entire web page by itself, we can go to that web page within the home page itself. It's like having a total different view of uh, another web page. Imagine being on the home page of a website, and instead of having to click links to go to all the other pages, you see all the pages down a row. That's exactly what we're doing here and it works out really great and it's a lot faster plus it's all based off javascript and it loads quick and is just awesome and i use the node package manager so we got all tons of resources um professional code right at our fingertips to use so let's go ahead and get out of this and i'll show you um we'll get back in the code here so let me shrink that blow that back up so in essence this app file this is the main file now you notice there's five different files in here so this app component dot spec dot ts file <laughs> now this got code in it we're never going to mess with all right so just forget this app component dot spec dot ts file even exists okay we'll leave it alone don't ever mess with it but this app modules file um you're going to learn here how this works um in just a minute this is an important file because every component that we build we got to declare it on this file so that way we know that we can show it through the view because this is the way it works we have the index HTML file this is where everything shows up now you can see here we got a head section so you nobody's gonna ever see this because this header information this is where the metadata goes this is the title of the app this is just metadata that the browser reads this is nothing that humans actually see but then we got the body of our app and you'll see in here that we have this app root tag now the reason we have that app root tag is because that root tag itself is telling it that this entire folder uh, needs to be displayed here now how do we display this folder um, how do we get our view well we gotta serve it so in order to serve it go down to your terminal type in ng and then type in the word serve just like that and press enter All right you should have it served up and it should be working and you should have a file that looks exactly like this this is our project right here now you'll see that um, it's got here's some links couple links to it it's got that big angular sign it says welcome 10 I put that in there just a minute ago and I'll tell you why in just a second but you'll notice and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink the screen down so you can see both of them here give me just a second there we go that it's displaying here because of this at root tag. Now, if I take this tag out, none of this is going to show up. Let me go ahead and save that, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll go ahead and reload that. And I'm sorry it's taking so long. I got a lot of different resources up and up on my computer, so it's taking a little extra longer. So. But either way, you see here, it's totally blank because I just took that one little tag out, okay, off of the main index HTML file. So that's the main index HTML. Now, yes, I can create a bunch of different components and then I can list each of their tags in a row down here and then you'll see everything populate, uh, you know, down the page um, in order of the different tags, but that's not what I want to do. Um, we're going to code it in such a way where we're showing data through these components um, so that way um, it, it looks really good and it flows really well so in order to do that I'm going to have to show you how the component works and how it's structured 
So here you see. So where is all this information coming from? You've seen I just took out this little tag and not all this information is there. Well, how does that work? That's because in this folder is called a component. Okay? It's an app component. You see how it says component after it? Everything that we're going to be using is a component. Now I can duplicate this folder and call it app2 and then I can put in an app2 tag here on the index HTML page and all that information will display right underneath all of it again but we can generate new components um, from the terminal here and they'll give us everything we need and I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute but let's go ahead and look over what a component is because components are where we're going to be doing the code uh, there's nowhere else in here we're going to be coding um, we're not even really going to be doing any code on the index HTML page we're not going to be t putting in new tags because we're going to be putting all of our views we're going to run them through the root component because the root components already hooked up it's already displaying here so all we got to do is modify the the root component build other components and send the views in here I can take the, the new component and add the tag in here and I'll show you how it's done so a component is made up of three parts it's made up of a CSS file, so I can put styling in here, just like you can on any other web page. It's got the HTML file, which and here's all that information that's over here to the right, as you see. Let me slide that over just a little bit. And you see it's totally responsive as well. Um, and you'll see that it says welcome, and then you see this word logic in here. And it's got these double curly brackets. This double curly brackets is called two-way data binding. Uh, this is a new concept. If you go to W3 schools, you can read all about it and use it in here. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it in just a minute. Um, and then we got regular H1. We got it in an H1 tag. We got an image sitting right here. We got links and lists. Normal HTML components. All HTML. Pretty simple. Uh, we can put all the HTML in here we want and design it right here. And you do that in this H app component HTML folder. Now, the other part of this. Um, of the component because these other two files, the app modules is where we make our declarations and the spec file, we don't even, we forget it exists, um, is the components.ts. Now we call it a .ts file instead of a JavaScript file because uh, the structure of this page uh, takes our JavaScript and converts it into TypeScript and it does this all in the behind the scenes so we don't have to learn a new language or nothing, you just use your normal JavaScript knowledge and, but this is where you put your logic. Now let's go over what we got here. Imports. If you want to import a different component or a different service, or say if I build another class and we want to tie into that class and use the functions off that class, and I have that class called uh, to do app class, um, and I have that file in this source directory. You see, I can close that up and I can close that up. We want everything to be in this source folder because this is the source of our project. All right, um, and I call that class. I'd have to say import to do list class, and then from wherever it is in here, um, and then then I'd leave the the file path to it uh, right here, as opposed to Angular Core. When we say Angular Core, this is actually pointing to that Node folder right here, and it's going into the core of Angular because there's an Angular Core folder in there that's got all kinds of functions and a whole library of of, of JavaScript language that makes up the Angular language. Uh, or the Angular uh, framework, I'm sorry. Now, this right here, this is always attributed with an at sign, and this is called your decorator. Now, can you tell me why it's called a decorator? If you look at it just for a minute. Well, you see that uh, it's basically saying that we pick a selector called app root. That's why that tag is called app root. Now, if I change that to app rooty or app rootify then the tag on it right here this little tag right here would have to be called app rootify that's what we're doing is we're declaring what this tag is called that's why it's a decorator this is a decorator tag essentially that's why it pulls in all three of those files with this one little tag now if I go back here that's called app root so we'll leave that at app root then I could place that tag anywhere and I can even put it in here if I wanted to and it would redisplay everything and then we're calling our template because we need a template to uh, you know visually see everything that's our view so our template is our component.html file and they that instead of calling it an HTML page 
uh, it's referred to as your template because that's where your design goes. And then, of course, you got the CSS file that is attributed to it. So that is why this is called a decorator because it's got everything to do with decorating the page in this style for the view of what everybody's going to see. You understand? That's why this is a component. Then we have a simple class. It's called app component and it's built like a constructor. And under this constructor, in between these two brackets, uh, we can put all the logic we want. Okay. So what two way data binding does is lets us like state a variable here. Like I have two variables here. All right. Title, which equals five plus five, and then logic, which equals 10. Or I could call that uh, a word like. Uh, Sean, my name, okay, and um, put the equal sign back there. All right, so logic equals Sean, and there we go. Um, I got two variables in here. Now I can I can write more complex logic. I can write functions in here, but they all have to stay in between these brackets. All right, I can write all all the JavaScript code I want, and this is where we put the logic. So like any other web page I'm building I got a JavaScript page it's got some functionality like if I want to tell it what to do with emails or um, you know how to count different users or something like that or clicks or add events or bind events which we'll get into event binding here after a bit um, but this is how it all works it's because it's derived from a component now I can go to this HTML file and you'll see that all I gotta do is use these double curly braces and I can call um, these uh, different variables here like this one's called title let me call it uh, angular alright so I'll just call that one angular um, you see how over here it changed to Sean because the logic variable that I put in here is encapsulated in these double brackets this is logic it doesn't say Sean and it but it puts out what that variable means you see what I'm saying so that's how it divides it. That's called two-way data binding because it's using two different directions to bind the data of this variable uh, within those brackets. Now I can call those brackets out from everywhere, anywhere. Okay, I can call them out all over the place. So I can just put double brackets, and then I could put logic, and then I can put. Uh, double brackets um, called title and if your linter's on it'll give you a reference to that or what is that called over here I forgot give me a second let me go back to the components oh we called it angular so okay so let me point out angular type angular in here and then all you gotta do is press control s to save or command s to save and you'll see all your changes um, so Angular, all right, boom. Press Control S, and the server generates everything for you. So as you see, all the changes take place on my application here to the right um, while I'm coding and while I'm building. So that way you can see what's actually going on and get this thing built out. And if I wanted to change the style to something, I can go in here to the CSS, and I can make a um, class. We'll call it um, we'll call it dot color dot color and then just like any other CSS class I'll put color and then I'll put um, well and I'll put blue alright so now all I gotta do is assign this class like I would do any other any other class and I can assign it to these variables right here so all I gotta do is put class equals well, two equals yeah. and then put color boom that's it and save my actions and it'll change the color of that h1 tag so as you'll see that's pretty much all you gotta do so if you want to change the color of something or change uh, the style of something you go to the CSS file and just declare it and it's just like working with normal web pages but we have it in a component so but this is the root component let's build another component so if we want to build another component we come down here make sure you got your terminal lit up and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow this up full screen for a minute so you can see everything um, make sure you're in your terminal 
not your output or your debug console and you'll see here um, you type in new and then type in components and then type in the name for your component so let's call this one test one all right press enter uh, did I spell that wrong let me look at my cheat sheet real quick Give me just a second. I gotta find my cheat sheet. What do I do with it? <laughs> Cut so many things open here. Um, I don't know if I spelled it wrong. I thought I did. Well, let's try this. Type in um, new C um, test one. C stands for component. So and that's not finding it. Why is that not finding it? Hold on just a second. Let me look this up real quick. It should be working, but it's not. So give me just a moment. And if I can find what I do with it. Here we go. Um, let's go back over here to my cheat sheet. And I'm going to leave this cheat sheet for you guys too. Oh, okay, that's what I was doing wrong. I was typing ng. Duh. Sorry, I'm tired of making these videos. I've been working on videos all day long. So, of course, for Angular, we got to type in ng. Everything for Angular starts with an ng. Then we're going to type in g for generate. We're not putting the, uh, the dash sign because we don't want it to be global. This, but we're just meaning this as in generate. That's why you put the dash sign in front of it so it means global. This actually means generate. You can actually type the word generate too. But then we put ng dash component. So this command right here, ng generate component. So we're saying Angular generate us a component and call it um, call it uh, test one. All right, boom. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. So let's check that out. Now let this generate and we will see what's going on here it's going to take it a second my computer's running really slow too many resources open boom there you go see how it just created everything and you're going to see it's going to pop up here in just a moment i probably didn't build it in here so well, I built it inside of it right here. So let me see, to do app. Okay, yeah, in that file. So here we have an entire new component. Boom. So if I open this folder, look at this. I have a component TS file. I got that spec TS file that we're just gonna forget about. An HTML file and a CSS file. Now, now um, I can go ahead and let's check these out and see what they say. So this says test one works, just puts in a little p paragraph tag, doesn't got any CSS, and the TypeScript file comes with uh, fully loaded with some boilerplate. Um, it's got the import, uh, so it's telling it uh, what I need from uh, the Angular core. Uh, it's telling it to connect it to my component, it gives it a name. So let's go ahead and let's let's add something on here. Um, this ng on it, this is what we're going to be using to uh, create event binding and data binding, which we'll get into here in another video. But I wanted to go over with you and show you um, how you can create a new component. Now you can start working on a new component, and uh, let's let's uh, let's get this test one works to show up here. Now, how do we do that? Well, simple. We go back to the original root HTML file up here where we're messing with all of our colors and let's go ahead and let me go under that div right there and let's go ahead and put in the tag and I'll put test one up oh, there it is app dot test one just press that and close it VS code actually generates it press save now right above that guess what we're gonna see 
everything that's in that component. Mm -hmm. Catching the drift on how this all works now. So now I can create another component if I want. And now see I added in here. I didn't even have to touch this main index HTML file. And now I can add things in here. Now I can add this this tag app test one anywhere inside this file. And I can whatever is in that component, um, whether it's some divs or images or if it's a form, um, that form and those images would all show up right there where I put it, wherever I put it. See I can take this tag, this app.test tag. And let's see, I'll copy that and I'll put it uh, right here in the list. Well, let's see what happens when I put it in here in the list. Um, I'll leave it in between the, here. Let me blow this up for a minute. So we got a full view. Um, do, do, do. So I'll go ahead and take out this link because we're not building anything out of this link. I'll go ahead and throw it right in there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just get rid of all these list items right here. Alright, groovy. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's shrink that back down. And we pull that over a little bit. Now let's let it do its thing. The server's working. And mine's working really super slow. And let's look down here. Test one works. Test one works. You see that? And that's because it's pulling that information out of that component because that's what it says here, test one works. Now I can put links and images there and that's what's gonna show up there. See, I can add a, uh, let's add an H1. And I'll tag that off and I'll put, uh, this is uh, a totally different component. Oh wait, I spelled that so wrong. So now we're going to save. Now you see that's going to pop up here. That's going to pop up down here because that's where I put that one little tag. And that's what two way data binding is. This is what we're doing. We're using event and data binding um, and we're using um, components. And basically, we call a component out with that little tag, whatever the tag is, whatever it's assigned to as in, in this decorator. You see what I'm saying? So, see how it says app test? Now, what if I change this? app test okay what would I have to do um, to change that I'd have to change it here but I'd also um, I think I'd have to change it here too did it add it to the apps modules because everything should be added to the apps modules so you see here um, it automatically added this because we had angular generator now I can go up here and click up here and add a new folder call it whatever I want and add all the files and use this type of file structure and add them all in there by hand and create them just as easy um, but it doesn't give me the the boilerplate decorators and stuff I need so it's a lot easier to just go down here type in that little command and boom build a component uh, we can build in a lot of other things which I'm gonna show you here in just a minute but you see how it puts it in here in my module now see if this wasn't here and it didn't import this into this app.modules TS file um, then none of this would be working right now uh, because it wouldn't know that this even existed. This would just be a folder with these different file types. It wouldn't be able to connect everything together. But since it's in this app.module file, this app.module.ts, it tells Angular that, hey, we got a new component. This is the name of it. This is where you get it from. Um, so you can go ahead and use it throughout the application and pull the information out from its HTML file. So you see how it starts from the TS file, goes to the HTML file, that's the view, there's the logic, and then that loops through and goes to the actual root component, which the root component loops through and goes out to the index component, which the final output is in the index component. And if we blow this up really big and we use uh, the dev tools, we can see where all this is actually coming from. And let me put it to the side real quick. I have it to where it opens up in a separate thing. So you can see here, um, let me shrink this right here. 
where everything's coming from and you can see what it's actually calling it's actually routing the component um, via that tag we created into the section that we put that tag on so we're routing that component into the other component and it's routing it back to the index HTML it's all based on routing so let me see if I can shrink that down um, yeah so see this is the code it actually generates. You see how light that code is? You see here's that header file that says to do and it shows the metadata and that's all hard coded on that index HTML file, right? Um, so if I wanted to have a footer on here that never changed, it was always the same, I can go ahead and do a footer and I'm gonna show you how we can go to Bootstrap and they have pre-built components and all we gotta do is copy them, paste the code and it looks great when we can start you know, readjusting the links and stuff. but. We can build everything, and this is why this is a single page application because everything happens on this one page. We can take a component, which is essentially just like a web page, but instead of having separate links up here to click and then go to another page or click and go to another page, we're taking our pages and we're putting all of our page views and we're calling these pages into one place. That's what makes this unique, that's what makes Angular so awesome. And then just you can see how light the code is, uh, it routes using these five script lines and uh, puts everything we need. Here's our list where I took it at. Here's some links. You see it routes that information using the ng. Um, you see here's my app test link and it calls ng content ng host. Um, it calls that script and then does its thing. And boom. Calls all the data in from that component. Now you can see the difference here. But this is what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to let you uh, play around with this. And um, the cheat sheet I will send you to create a component. Uh, for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to do in another video. But I want you to understand the concepts of what we're building here. Because it's vitally important to know that we're only working in the, in the source folder. And we're going to manipulate this app component folder. And we're going to build new components and new classes and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to work in. That's what's going to make this all up. All right. But everything else, you don't need to worry about. So just leave it all alone. And uh, remember that a component is made up of these three sections. And this spec.ts file, just ignore it completely. Don't even worry about it right now. Uh, there's no need for you to worry about it. And play around with it. Go ahead and create you a couple different components in here. and um, Or just create another component. Or go in here and start doing code on the HTML file. I implore you, go ahead and work in this and um, start building something uh, with an image in it and uh, use an input. And you can list your JavaScript if you're going to build an input. Build it here under the export class. And you'll see here we got uh, a blank constructor and then we got the ng on in it which is a directive for using data and event binding to create events like click events and stuff like that. Um, but in a asynchronous way, which we'll get into later, in the constructor uh, you would call out, um, you know, different uh, imports here in your constructor. You construct them like you do in any other constructor. You call them out here so you can use those functions within um, this little class, and this is called the test component class. So basically, um, if you wanted to delete these. Uh, for now, this constructor and this ng on it, you go ahead and delete it, it's not going to hurt it. And you can put your logic all under here, anywhere you want. Um, you know, you can uh, build your little JavaScript program. Um, if you want to try to replicate the, um, the project um, uh, for uh, the, the number counter that we did or anything like that, um, you can go ahead and start building that in here. Use a couple components, use these two components, create a new component, and, and build it in here and just make sure um, that you build it in one component and then output it in the second component with the tag app slash test and um, you know go build one of the JavaScript projects that we built before and make it show up here in this component and just play around with it so you can get familiar with it and then you, you can see how it clicks and be like okay I see how this concept works so that's what I'm trying to initiate to you is that a component is just like a web page except it's its own little module it's it's a component it's its own little component and instead of going out to a bunch of different web pages um, we're bringing them all together that's then we're calling them all in the same place so that way they're easily accessible they load faster and everything is right there and you can do logic from all over the places 
Um, now I'm gonna get to work on building the rest of the tutorial. So uh, that's all for me showing you how Angular works, what you need to know about Angular, and how to get started. And hopefully you got an understanding. If you got any questions, uh, contact me via the comments, or if you got my email, if you're part of one of my classes, and then um, I'll answer you back. And if you got any other questions, I'll hear from you then. So that's all for now. Uh, keep coding.